I'll start by telling you a story. Um, in the year 1373, so quite a while ago, um, a young woman, about my age actually, uh, became acutely ill for about a week's duration and very nearly died. During that time, uh, she experienced 16 showings, as she called them, or visions of the Passion of Christ. Not the movie, you understand, but um, the actual events. Anyway, over two decades after that illness, she wrote a series of reflections on those visions, which came to be regarded as one of the most profound works of theology ever written. In fact, her book is the earliest known book in the English language ever written by a woman. The church calls her Julian of Norwich, uh, though her real name is lost to time. In one of her reflections, reflections uh, she wrote this. In this vision, he, that is Jesus, showed me a little thing the size of a hazelnut lying in the palm of my hand. And to my mind's eye, it was as round as any ball. I looked at it and thought, what can this be? And the answer came to me, it is all that is made. I wondered how it could last, for it was so small I thought it might suddenly disappear. And the answer in my mind was, it lasts and will last forever because, because God loves it. And in the same, everything exists through the love of God. In this little thing, I saw three attributes. The first is that God made it. The second is that God loves it. And the third is that God cares for it. But what does this mean to me? Truly, the maker, the lover, the carer. For until I become one substance with him, I can never have love, rest or true bliss. That is to say, until I am so bound to him that there may be no created thing between my God and me. That captures something very important uh, to hold on to in reflecting on God and creation. And that is, creation is actually happening right now, in this moment. God is holding everything in existence now. See, Christian teaching is not that uh, God once created the world and then um, stood back, had a look and thought, nailed it, good luck from here, and had nothing else to do with it. Rather, in creation, which is happening right now, remember, God is invested in a relationship of giving life to that which is not God. Sadly, I think we Christians haven't always grasped the implications of this particularly well. And our legacy of interacting with God's creation is uh, mixed, to say the least. Arguably, though, that has changed a fair bit in recent decades. And we've started to realise uh, what this can all mean. That, as um, Archbishop of Canterbury former Archbishop of Canterbury, Rowan Williams, said, every object or person we encounter is in a relationship with God before they're in a relationship of any kind with us. I'll say it again. Every person or object we encounter is already in a relationship with God before they're in any kind of relationship with us. If that doesn't make us approach the world and other people and animals with reverence and amazement, I don't know what will. So 
take a page out of Jesus' book, he who was most attuned to the presence of the God he called Father in everything and everyone around him. Look at the birds of the air. Consider the lilies of the field. Take a loaf of bread or a cup of wine, a river of water, the wood of the cross. God is there to be found in it all. The glory of the Creator reflected in everything around us. That's why we take time to celebrate God's creation to God's creation today and those uh, co-creatures with us in that creation. Before we have anything to say about it, they are in a relationship with God at this very moment, just as we are. This is why we also um, lament the abuse and degradation of the natural world and the variety of life, because when apart from the sheer existential danger that it puts human life in, it demonstrates, I think, a failure to engage with the work that God is doing right now in a way that actually honours God. That our world is not just a resource to be consumed, but a mystery to be engaged with reverently. One of the old hymns that we sing, uh, called Immortal Invisible, uh, says this quite nicely, it sums it up. It says, to all life thou givest, to both great and small. In all life thou livest, the true life of all. So we give thanks to God for the gift of life, uh, for the gift of animal companions, for the birds of the air, flowers of the field, for sustaining us in this very moment. And we give thanks that through Christ we look forward in hope to that time when there shall be no created thing between us and our God. Amen. <laughs>